you and welcome to Matt's chats about mental health in HD. Um, I am joined today by Brianna and Jesse. Um, both of them are from HD families. Uh, Brianna, a young person who's going through university. And Jesse, um, also still a young person who does therapy with, for mental health um, as her a day job. So we're very happy to have Jesse uh, here with us and also Jesse um, volunteers her time at HDO as well as part of our education committee. So thank you, Jesse. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> um, it, and obviously myself here, Matthew Ellison and founder of HDO. Um, so we're all from HD families. Um, and hey, why don't we start with introductions? So uh, Brianna, if you start and just introduce yourself and just let your connection to HD, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so um, I'm Brianna. Um, I am in college right now um, in the United States, um, and my connection to HD is that my grandmother had it before she passed away, and then my mom has it now, and then um, I was actually tested um, before I got to college. Thank you, Brianna. And Jesse. And I am Jesse. I um, am working in, in the United States as a mental health therapist. I was introduced to Huntington's disease when I found out that my dad had it. Um, we didn't know anybody else in his family had it because his parents died younger. Um, and I was 18 at the time. And I did not get tested until I was about 25. Um, and I actually tested negative. My, I have one sibling and she tested positive. Thank you, Brandon and Jesse. Um, so mental health, <laughs> where do we begin? And in HD, it's, uh, it's absolutely everywhere. Um, Maybe Jesse, you want to talk a bit about um, mental health in HD families and, and your experience of that? Personally, myself, I can tell you that going through the testing process um, and even finding out when my dad had HD um, when I was 18, I developed some severe anxiety to the point where I was having breathing issues and I couldn't figure out what they were. There's nothing physically wrong with me. So I found out that it was all anxiety related. Um, I didn't go to an actual counselor until I was in college. Hey, Brianna, do you have any experiences? Yeah, so um, I found out that my mom had Huntington's in probably 2014 or so, um, we knew my grandmother had Huntington's, but like they never really talked about Huntington's as Huntington's. I always just knew there was something wrong with her. And because of the stigma behind it, they kind of refused to talk about it most of the time. Um, and like, despite the fact that we visited her as frequently as we did, like they, it was all like, hidden under the rug and it was something that never really got brought up. And then when my mom really started showing some symptoms when I was um, starting high school, um, they sat me down and they were like, okay, so like, I have to tell you something, it's super important, like, please don't freak out. I thought they were giving me like, um, or I thought they were telling me my mom like had received like a cancer diagnosis and she was gonna be dead in the next six months kind of thing. And so, there was a lot of anxiety from how that was approached. So like there is a right and a wrong way to give people that information. Um, and then once I got tested, um, there was a lot of anxiety around that as well. Um, and just the unknowns of the future, because you never really know until you, like have that result in your hand. And then it's like, okay, well like here it is. And then it's, well, what do I do with this answer now? And so it took me a couple months to really kind of like wrap my head around it and be like, okay, well, like, since I'm positive, like, I had to kind of figure out like, how do I want to live my life um, to the fullest extent that I can while I'm still here? Because like, I suffered a lot 
um, of like anxiety and um, depression when I was in like um, late middle and like early high school. And I kind of finally got it under wraps when I like started going to therapy. And I think in my generation right now, therapy is a, we, I hate to word it this way, but we kind of joke about therapy because it's an easier way to cope with the fact that we are going to therapy and the fact that it's so opposite of like the parents trying to be like, no, like don't go to therapy. Don't talk about therapy. I feel like I hate to say it this way, but the older generation, um, tend to shy away from talking about like therapy as something that is beneficial, um, in the extent that it like ends up being because they don't want other people to know there's something wrong. Whereas all of us like teenagers and like early, early adolescents are like, we're messed up. And so I think we kind of, the camaraderie around all having issues kind of works together. Jesse, you got any thoughts about that? Um, I would say that uh, Brianna, I think like you said, it is kind of, a joke and I I personally like I feel like everybody should have a therapist you know I agree um, with that wholeheartedly I'm, I'm a little bit biased but you know I I feel like it can be a preventative measure but it, it's certainly becoming a huge area you know I mean yeah, mental health is, is almost as well advertised as physical health at the moment it seems like you know it's going in that direction um mm -hmm. it's becoming much more awareness about mental health um than it used to be in my generation as brianna would say um mm -hmm. but i think Sorry. we are going <laughs> it's okay i think we are going in a good direction there um and i'm i'm pleased about that because i, I think you're absolutely right in what, what brianna said and what jesse has said as well isn't that you know mental health therapy is important yeah and i i definitely you know like i said i'm biased but but i think <laughs> the same the same way um and even to like mental health and hd type of stuff um you know personally because i didn't even know about huntington's disease didn't even know what it was um i denied a lot of different things for a long time like I couldn't even say the word Huntington's disease until I was probably not gonna lie 30. Like it it was very difficult and and that year when I was 30 my dad passed away from it so um yeah I mean it's it's hard and I think too with everything, um, you know, that HDO is doing, thankfully we can find peers that, or, you know, people that have been in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah, because I think one of the hardest things, I speak for somebody who doesn't use, not really used it, but uh, one of the hardest things uh, I always think is trying to find a good therapist. Um, Certainly, I think I've heard a lot of people having problems finding a therapist that can really connect with them and what they're trying to understand with HD. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would say, too, you know, professionally, I try to tell people, you know, that we're just like in any other profession, doctors, um, teachers, that kind of thing. But, you know, you can choose your own therapist and you can try us out and if there's not a match there's not a match and you try somebody else but personally I can tell you that um pretty much the whole reason I went into therapy was because of the HD stuff and I probably had six different therapists and I had to explain my story quite a few times and I will tell you not one of them um, did any research about HD outside of the office and I explicitly told my last couple that I need them to do this for me because this is why I'm in therapy you need to at least kind of see something and I'm a, an advocate for for getting um, Huntington's disease out in the world too but yeah, so I mean, that is frustrating trying to find a therapist, especially one, again, with our unique situation that we're, we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. 
And I can imagine that must have been, yeah, incredibly frustrating for you to like, kind of keep going from one to the other and they're just kind of doing the same thing, kind of being a bit lazy with you. Um, yeah, it's not good. I um, guess I guess I learned in my profession, like myself, I definitely will look something up if I need to. So it is, there's It's that. a good lesson for yourself, isn't it? Good experience for the yeah. dog. How not to do it. Yeah, they don't need to be an expert, do they? They just need to know what right. it is. Right, and, and that was my thought, is if I could give them to... enough resources for them to truly understand, like, why my mom was acting the way she was, they could help me rationalize it. And, and do you think that as time goes on, that you might need that mental health support again? Um, for I'm not... You know, obviously for your mother, uh, for the progression of your mother, but also for yourself and, and your own results. Is that something you think you might go back to? It really depends on how I'm handling everything. Um, because my, I, I think I was really lucky with the therapist I got. Like I, I've heard a lot of, I don't want to call them horror stories, but I had people who had really therapists who didn't care enough about their situation or understood them in a way enough that their therapy experience was helpful. And, um, so I was really lucky because she gave me, um, I don't like wh what's better than coping mechanisms. There's a word. Just coping strategies. Is strategies. Like, yeah. so essentially she gave me strategies to be able to handle my mental health in the future. And those strategies is what I really took out of therapy. And it's what got me out of therapy faster because since she's, instead of me just talking about it all the time, she was like, okay, well, like if this happens again, here's how you can try to handle it better next time. Instead of just letting me rant, complain, and then her say, oh, I'm so sorry that's happening. And then send me home at the end of the appointment. She was like, okay, well, like, what, what are your options? Like, instead of yelling back at your dad because he's telling you to do the dishes and you're too tired, be like, okay, I give me 10 minutes to lay down and I will come do it later kind of thing. And so it really helped me look at logistical solutions to my problem. ADHD is something that is part of me. It's part of my identity. It's part of who I am. And it's something I deal with on a daily basis because I'll get calls from my mother at midnight and I'm like, I have an exam at 8 a.m. mom. But there I am talking to her on the phone, trying to calm her down for whatever's going on at her assisted living community at the time. Um, so it's definitely something I deal with on a daily basis. And it's definitely something I need support for, but it's not always there are other things that can help support you through those situations but if you haven't had a therapist go to therapy and have them help you find those coping strategies that you can use to get yourself where you need to be for your future that's a good answer sorry yeah. <laughs> i went like really yeah. right there that's the mental health advert right there. Mic drop. No. Nope. <laughs> that was a mic drop moment. I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I now have a terrible question, Jesse. Um, are you ready? Um, so, yep. <laughs> okay. Let's see where I'm thinking here. So we know that uh, HC families go through a lot, and uh, even research says that you know HC families go through more than the most um but i'm wondering whether hd families are using mental health services as much as they should be or not what do you think <laughs> it, and i would say no i've been practicing in my area and i've had my name like i gave my name to neurologists and things like that around the area and i haven't gotten one referral for people that need help with hd you know we're we're trying and it's getting better but i it it's such a, a complicated situation because like we've got all of the normal stuff that people deal with right and then we've got hd that's on top of that so it just it it's a lot like you like you said yeah um yeah and, and I, I i probably would 
would say no to that question too if I asked myself because I, I just but again I, I, I don't know I don't have any insight there it just it's something that it just feels that way um, that you know PhD families aren't really using uh, mental health services that are well hopefully available to them um, and I think probably stigma is plays a role there um, you know stigma uh, in the community, but also in the families. In the families, you know, we're not talking about things and, and not being open and honest. It comes back to that again for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I really appreciate you both coming on and uh, talking about uh, a difficult topic and uh, sharing your your personal insight into it. Some it's been uh, very interesting uh, for me. So hopefully, it'll be interesting for everyone else as well. Um, yeah, uh, so thank you so much, Brianna, and thank you, Jesse.